what it's there to do. But the point that I'm making is that when you look at the 12 tribes, and I've been thinking about this for years. In fact, a couple years ago, I, I, I actually had joined the 12 tribes at a time when it was going through a lot of transformation. I don't know what happened with my membership, but they was, you know, they was going through a whole big change around them. But the 12 tribes, I've been thinking about this, like, in spite of some of the negative, and we know about, you know, we, we have different folks that are close and up in different, you know, different levels within the organization that are like family to, to us, and they've shown us, you know, the good, the bad, and the ugly. But overall, they are more progressive. There's more of a balance because they address those nine areas more biblically. And even where they fall short, they still have the glory of God, the Bible, as an anchor. You see what I'm saying? And that identity as Israel, even though it may not touch on the real national dispersion of the racial Israel squarely. You understand? Because it includes more astrological or celestial Israel using the the zodiac or the zodiac on that level which is a meta a metaphysical dimension that the 12 tribes have shown is operable for organization you understand it's operable for organization so when we look at the Tsar Yako, the crown prince the crown prince level and the monarchist level the Kepa Neges party and, and and that 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 whole dimension right there when we look at what they're seeking to do it is touching on the political area you see what I'm saying? And vis-a-vis -vis Ethiopia, we don't really, most Rastafari are kind of lost when they get to the Ethiopia dimension, dealing with the internal politics and where they really stand. You see, they come in Ethiopia more or less out of kind of a, a, a partial vision, but then it's a partial dream, kind of like a, a, a like a eschatological kind of a level where they, you know, like when they come to Ethiopia and say Zion and and expect certain things that they don't find in Ethiopia. Eschatological level? Yeah, eschatological level, you know, like in the prophetic level of the Bible, like where we're going to heaven and Zion, and so they go to Ethiopia expecting to find what they have read in certain parts of the Bible, but they have ignored right. other parts of the Bible that will clarify why we see what's going on in Ethiopia going on. All right. When we get the fullness of it, that's why it's massive that the Bible shouldn't be cut into pieces. So we shouldn't focus on one part to the exclusion of the next part, because when the good days turn bad, the other area of the scripture, it comforts and strengthens and helps us to overcome the negative setbacks. You understand right. and to be aware of what, what, what could be coming down the pipe. Exactly, and what's coming here, the preparation, it's to be forewarned, is to be forearmed. So the scripture forearms us in that sense. So the 12 tribes, with the exception, you understand, of certain personal people areas where, you know, certain things go on that people might run as rumors against the 12 tribes they have a pretty good stance right now and I think that Rastafari should at least look at the lead that 12 tribes has taken in regard to the Zara Yako claims and we need to really have some more discussions I think on where we really stand what we want to ask if we are to support Zara Yaakov's claims what should we ask of line the Jew society we already know what we would ask and what we do ask of of the crown prince you understand in whatever capacity now you understand and if God wills that he becomes you know the ceremonial king you understand or constitutional king of a future um, Ethiopian state in other words, that, that our dual citizenship be recognized, us being Israel as well as, as, as Ethiopia in the covenant sense, being Ethiopian Hebrews. In other words, we need to have our dual citizenship is, is the most important thing. Our sovereignty and our dual citizenship is the most important thing for the global Rastafari community. And, and that hasn't been articulated very well by different mansions and different folks in Rastafari, different groups, because they're dealing with a panhandling African approach post-rebellion post um, Ethiopia and are not dealing with the present reality prophetically. 
You see what I'm saying? So we need to, first of all, address that we're Israel. Even if we're not 12 tribes of Israel members in that specific sense, we need to address that. And any Rastafari group or individuals or family that recognize they are Israel and the, and the covenant connection will prosper in those nine uh -huh. areas. You know, because God already promises that we'll prosper when we do it his way. But the whole choice about Zar Yaakov, but the whole decision about Zar Yaakov, I really want to caution um, a lot of our Rastafari brothers and groups and, and different folks not to rush to judgment, not to judge anything before it's time, and really to kind of like be, be um, inclined to the fact that we should not be against the establishment of a monarchy, because if things had not turned the way they turned, there would be some monarchist so-called so structure in Ethiopia, and we know that was established by our godfather, by Ketamar with You see what I'm saying? Because we have a little... The state of David must remain. Exactly, exactly. And, and you have to recognize there's some Ethiopian Christians who are more Tawahedo Christians or more like Orthodox Christians, right? And they may support the monarchist effort. Right? There may be even some Ethiopian Muslims that support the monarchist. I know there are that support the monarchist effort. There's some of us Rastafari, there's 12 tribes, and some of us, even Lion of Judah, we support the monarchist effort. We are not all signed off on, say, Zar Yaakov, because we know that it's about the will of God. But we are not seeking to oppose, you understand, his righteous, to fulfill all righteousness, his effort. You understand? Mm -hmm. Towards bringing that into front and center. And this is where we really need to rally around that while we still, you know, discuss and reason with Zar Yaakov's camp. Not with the 12 tribes only, because they're our brothers, but with Zar right. Yaakov's camp, because his camp is like the Imperial Council. You understand? Right. Issues that concern not just generally Rastafari, because we don't have a general Rastafari kind of uh, anyone who can speak just generally for Rastafari besides his majesty and his word and will. But the different the different concerned um, Rastafari should begin th those discussions right now. Even as an individual, we should, you know, um, contact, like I said, there's a Kevin and Guest party, there's a Ning site that we join actually today or was it earlier today we joined this right, let, me, uh, let, let me have the name of that site before we're finished yeah it's Kib it's kibra nagast um party and it's spelled k-e-b-r-a-n-a-g-a-s-t p-a-r-t-y and it's a dot ning dot com site and we would suggest that ones and ones should sign up to it and get involved you know, get involved finding out, well, what are they talking about? And we should gather and, and discuss issues that concern us as Rastafari if, if we're, we're non-aligned in the sense of 12 tribes. You know, we support 12 tribes, but since we don't speak as a member of the organization called 12 tribes, you understand, we need to discuss, you know, the, 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 the elements. I mean, I mean, this is a very, I feel it's a very... You know, this is my personal view of it, but it's a very vibrant time. It's a very dynamic time. It's a very dynamic discussion that we shouldn't lose this this opportunity at this time to really, you know, focus on that political area. Because you have to remember that the, establishing the Solomonic monarchy, it does more than just put, say, the crown prince, Zar Yaakov, on the throne. It brings into the not even Rastafari. It brings the whole Ethiopian Hebrew Israelite, you understand, lost sheep dimension to to a whole higher level. Yeah. Uh, as as we're saying this now, you know, I'm thinking. My spirit is thinking about. I, I don't know if you know the Virgin, uh Brother Ross Mc McPherson. McPherson, yeah. Ross E S P McPherson, yeah. Yeah, who's working very strongly on the OAU or the AU now because he's been, uh, you know, I spoke with him once a good while ago, I got his number and I lost track where, you know, I've dropped off a, I dropped off the radar with him and I really need to get connected up with him again. Yes, a good brother, that, that's a good brother of mine. I'm actually a member of the EJS, the Ethiopia Jamaica Society. I'm one of the, one of the founding, myself and the next uh, Nigu Samlak is, is like founding, um, you know, brethren. Uh -huh. 
like when when Kablam, that Kablam, Kablam. yeah when that organization came about and that brother see see I I, I love that brother and, and there should be more. I hope you got his number. I hope you must have his number to give to me because I know I've lost his number. I and him got to link for a moment, but but one thing I love about what he's doing, I could get his information. I'll get his information for you. In fact, you might be even able to research him on the internet. Cause I know I had the internet. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, cause I, I, I first heard him on Inner Light Radio. Yeah, he's yeah. out there. He's out there. We, we even went to the Ethiopian embassy during the the bottom end, during the whole border war conflict that was going on between Ethiopia and Eritrea. We had uh, attended a delegation that was led by Ross E S P McPherson to the yeah. Ethiopian consulate to the United Nations. A couple of years ago, and that was a very good and vibrant meeting where we presented the um, the the what is there to do.